Hello and welcome to the Aquarium. Come in and take a seat, the show is about to begin. Oncorhynchus rasrosus is a prehistoric species of salmon, commonly referred to as the saber-toothed salmon. It lived among the Pacific coastlines of North America, particularly around California and Oregon, from around 13 to 5 million years ago. It grew exceptionally large for salmon, reaching lengths of about 2.7 metres, that's about 9 foot long. From its size and name, you might expect it to be a fearsome predator, slashing open its prey with deadly long fangs, but this isn't quite true. First, it's believed that the saber-toothed salmon was a filter feeder, using gill rakers, which although it might look fearsome, are actually bony or cartilaginous projections that trap small food particles. The salmon would have eaten zooplankton and small shrimp, which were known to live in high quantities during the Miocene. This may explain why the saber-toothed salmon grew so big. The greater abundance of food, as well as a slower lifestyle, which would not require calories for fast pursuit swimming, meant that more energy could go towards growth. But what about those fangs for which the saber-toothed salmon gets its name? Most of the skulls of the fossils of the saber-toothed salmon have been incomplete, with the large teeth not actually positioned as they would be in life. The positioning of the teeth pointing downwards like in the saber-toothed cat has actually been discovered as incorrect. Two recent discoveries of intact skulls revealed that these teeth actually pointed out to the side. Rather than use them for hunting, the salmon probably used them for intraspecies combat during spawning. Scientists compared 51 different fossils from ancient deposits of both freshwater and saltwater environments and compared the size and shape of the large teeth. They discovered the saber-toothed salmon didn't have spike teeth its whole life, but rather developed them as they transitioned from life in the ocean to their breeding phase in the freshwater. Pacific salmon undergo the same kind of metamorphosis today. Also, they found that the teeth from freshwater deposits were not only larger, but they were also more recurved and the tooth tips more worn and blunt. In addition, their bony tooth bases were considerably larger. Teeth from the coastal marine deposits were smaller, straighter, the tooth tips sharper and the tooth bases smaller. These discoveries indicate that these fish were using their teeth to defend their territories and to make their nests. It's thought that the sockeye salmon are the closest living relatives and probably live very similar lifestyles. It is also a filter feeder and will migrate from marine waters to freshwater to breed. During this time, males go through numerous morphological changes at maturation, including an increase in body depth, hump height and snout length. Although they don't grow fangs, the larger snout and body size helps during aggressive encounters with rival males. Well, that's all I have for you this week. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. I hope to see you next time here at the aquarium when we'll be looking at the Ichthyosaurus. So, I'll see you then. Goodbye.